It's 4 a.m. on Sunday, June 18th. A submersible called Titan begins its dive down to the wreck site of the Titanic. Approximately one hour and 45 minutes later. Titan loses contact with its mothership, assuming it didn't implode, likely sinking down further to the Titanic's final resting place. 12,500 feet below surface level. The five-person crew, including four passengers, and the CEO of the company behind the excursion, are now all alone in the vast, dark depths of the ocean. With no means of communication, no GPS capabilities, and a limited air supply, they sit in the small titanium vessel that would more than likely become their coffin, hopelessly rethinking their choice to make this journey. Simply put, this is the stuff of absolute nightmares. It's tragic and, unfortunately, may have been very avoidable. Stories like this should be analyzed in great detail because they reveal a lot about human nature and the darker side of company morality. Ocean Gate Expeditions offers you the once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to be a specially trained crew member safely diving to the Titanic wreckage site. Ocean Gate Expeditions is a privately owned company that specializes in organizing extended expeditions, which last up to nine days, catering to tourists who are willing to pay substantial fees for the opportunity to explore shipwrecks and underwater canyons. In addition to serving the tourism industry, the company also offers crewed submersibles for commercial projects and scientific research. As mentioned on their official website, the company was established by Stockton Rush, an aerospace engineer and pilot who holds the position of chief executive officer, and like we mentioned, is one of the five crew members in the Titan. The Titan was developed by OceanGate and was touted as the world's only crewed submersible capable of descending to a depth of 4,000 meters, or 13,000 feet below the ocean's surface. This remarkable capability allows the vessel to access nearly 50% of the world's seabed. Since 2021, OceanGate has been offering guided tours of the Titanic wreckage site, with guests paying $250,000 for the very unique opportunity to visit the location. The industry has been surprisingly popular, with many millionaires and billionaires taking part, as well as some people who have spent decades saving up for the opportunity. She's been saving up to see the Titanic for 30 years. Some people buy a house. I wanted to go to Titanic. Unfortunately, with the recent loss of Titan on its voyage to the Titanic site, several shady practices have come to light. So let's take a look at each of these concerning elements to this story, and more importantly, what lessons we can take away from them. And the first red flag to this story is simply the death contract. It might sound a bit dramatic to call it that, but as Mike Reyes, a former passenger on the Titan, points out, death is mentioned three times on the first page of the waiver that the company made each passenger sign before getting on board. You sign a massive waiver that lists one way after another that you could die on the trip. They mentioned death three times on page one. Now, waivers oftentimes don't cover anywhere near what companies say they cover in a legal sense. But the lesson to take away from this is simple. Trust your gut. Don't assume things are safe just because a company says they are. And if you see red flags in something, it's probably a good idea to walk away. In many ways, society has conditioned us to be much more trusting than what is natural to us. That feeling you get in the pit of your stomach? You should listen to it more often because it can save your life. An experimental submersible vessel that does not been approved or certified by any regulatory body and could result in physical injury, disability, emotional trauma, or death. Where do I sign? Don't ignore red flags. And in the case of the Titan, a contract that listed all the horrible ways one could die wasn't the only red flag, because it seems like they cut corners on parts and safety. One of the parts of the story that's circulating quite a bit is the fact that this submersible was being piloted by a video game controller. We run the whole thing with this game controller. <laughs> Come on! In fact, people have actually found the exact controller on Amazon for 30 bucks. Now, we can't say we know anything about the mechanics of deep ocean-faring watercrafts, but this seems bad. 
The CBS Sunday Morning piece that was broadcast six months ago really shines a light on the level of carelessness Ocean Gate may have been guilty of. We can use these off-the-shelf components. I got these from uh, Camper World. With many parts of the Titan seemingly being Mickey Mouse and Ocean Gate CEO Stockton Rush not only being dismissive of those concerns, but outright agreeing with the assessment and finding it humorous. There's certain things that you want to be uh, buttoned down. So the pressure vessel is not MacGyver at all because that's where we work with Boeing and NASA and the University of Washington. Everything else can fail. Your thrusters can go, your lights can go, you're still gonna be safe. Others have criticized overall design choices for the Titan. For instance, the submersible being white is a red flag. Being white poses a challenge as if it emerges, it would make the submersible extremely difficult to spot from the air. And what makes this even worse is the fact that the crew is literally bolted in from the outside. The crew closes the hatch from the outside with 17 bolts. Meaning even if they were to surface, they would still run out of air unless they were found. Butch Hendrick, president and founder of Lifeguard Systems, who has been teaching and developing rescue services for over 30 years, even criticized the vessel for its lack of basic safety systems. What would have helped is if the submersible had had releasable transmitters. And outright saying that he would have never gone on it. Well, you have gotten into this submersive. You don't have no. to answer, but I'm curious. No, I would not. And on top of that, it gets even worse. In the CBS Companion interview, the CEO of Ocean Gate Expeditions says this. There's a limit. You know, at some point, safety just is pure waste. I mean, if you just want to be safe, don't get out of bed. Don't get in your car. Don't do anything. At some point, you're going to take some risk, and it really is a risk-reward question. I said, I think I can do this just as safely by breaking the rules. That response is so mask-off and honest that it's actually incredible that nobody within the Ocean Gate company had blown the whistle over how careless it seems things were done. Well, actually, they did. Let's talk about previous documented safety concerns. Ocean Gate has a track record of safety concerns surrounding its equipment. These concerns were raised by a former submarine pilot who was terminated for expressing doubts about the structural integrity of the vessel. According to legal records from a lawsuit in 2018, David Lockridge, the former director of marine operations at Ocean Gate, had previously alerted the company to possible safety issues regarding their submersible Titan. Lockridge, a skilled submarine pilot from Scotland, joined Ocean Gate in 2015 as the captain of the Titan, which was still in the development phase. According to court records, Lockridge expressed growing concerns regarding the company's failure to conduct thorough testing on the submersible's hull, which is crucial for withstanding immense pressure during dives to great depths in the ocean floor. He alleged that the paying passengers would be unaware of the experimental design, the absence of non-destructive testing on the hull, and the use of hazardous flammable materials within the submersible. Despite his insistence, the company declined to cover the cost of non-destructive testing and unmanned pressure testing, and according to Lockridge, he was terminated after informing company executives that he would not authorize any manned tests of the submersible until the required testing had been completed. How accurate these claims are, obviously, is still unclear. With that said, the lesson to take away is this. Some companies will lower safety standards if it means cutting costs or increasing profits. It's just important to know that this does happen and you shouldn't defer to or blindly trust a company with safety decisions that directly impact you. Now let's talk about Ocean Gate's response, specifically something that is very telling, that being the eight hour wait. Another very concerning detail that has emerged is the fact that after the mothership lost contact with the Titan at 9.45 a.m. on Sunday morning, the incident was not reported to the U.S. Coast Guard until 5.40 p.m., eight hours later, and the Canadian Coast Guard was only alerted at 9.13 p.m. on Sunday night. In such a dire situation, where time is truly of the essence. This obviously seems like quite the wait. As time passed, experts became increasingly concerned about the crew's chances of survival. Now, one can only speculate the motivation for this delayed response in alerting the Coast Guard, whether it was the belief that they had it all under control or the fear of a public relations nightmare. It leaves us with our final lesson. Companies, first and foremost, will cover their own asses. So always cover yours. Stories like these are terrifying and tragic tragic, but they're full of important lessons. So use those lessons and make good choices. By the time we're done testing it, I believe it's pretty much invulnerable. And that's pretty much what they said about the Titanic. That's right. <laughs>